We're celebrating Easter today. Our church is doing it. And you might ask, how come our church celebrates Easter a week later? It's not that we celebrate Easter because we want this day to be the Easter. It's just that we want to celebrate Easter every day. So it turns out to be twice for our church. So we celebrate Easter twice when every church celebrates once in their church. So I think we are better, <laughs> better if we are um, in good uh, time schedule. Um, last week, we shared how 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, that our Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, not only died and buried, but he also raised according to the scripture. So we believe in resurrected king who destroyed the work of the devil. We believe in resurrected priest who set us free from sin and death and who is here to serve and to give his body and give himself as a ransom for us. And he's still uh, doing everything on behalf of us. Not only that, we believe in resurrected prophet. He's still at work, who is the way, the truth, and the life. For everyone around us, for everyone in this movement, that we should restore, Pastor Zhang says, fundamental faith in this, Jesus, this living Jesus Christ. And I believe we believe in this living Jesus Christ. But the thing is this, what bothers us the most is our old self. This makes us have all kinds of excuse not following God's word. You know, we're literally giving this kind of excuse. What if it's not happening? What if it's not going to be done that way? What if God has... God's going to change it. We are using all kinds of excuses. Can you lower my voice a little? I see howlings. So we, we give all kinds of excuses. What if God's not going to restore? What if God's not going to do this? What if? We're giving all kinds of excuses not carry on, not carrying on God's desire and His will. When Peter confessed that Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, he, Jesus told him that how he will be led to death, that he will die soon, and he will resurrect. And the response of Peter was really ridiculous. If you look at Matthew chapter 16, 23, Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. Okay, who he is that rebuked Jesus? And he says, far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. So Peter's telling Jesus, and it seems like he does this on behalf of Jesus' health and Jesus' well-being. So he says, this shall never happen. You should never put to death. And Jesus tell him, told him, but he turned aside to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of men. Why does God say that? Why does Jesus say that to G uh, Peter when he said he tried to protect Jesus? It's because Jesus only thinks about himself. Think about it. He abandoned all his profession. He abandoned everything that he, followed. he started to follow Jesus alone for three years. That he doesn't know what to do if his leader is gone. So when Jesus is gone, he's literally thinking of losing everything of his own. So it seems like Peter thinks about Jesus. He worries about Jesus. No, Peter only thinks about himself. This is our old self. Although we confess a confession of faith, Jesus, you are the Christ, the living, the living uh, son of the living God, and that we still have our old self that only focuses on ourselves, right? And we are using God for our lives. It's for you, Lord. But Jesus knows you only think about yourself. So what did Jesus say? If you only think about yourself, this is how he replied. Get behind me, Satan. 
This is how Satan is deceiving you guys. You do everything on behalf of God without really listening to the depth of his heart. And we do everything on behalf of him, on behalf of me, and we cover the self within the sentence, glorify you. It will be glory to you. I glorify you. And we do everything for him. Seems like we do everything for him, yet he knows it is all for yourself. Acts chapter 1, 3. Jesus presented himself alive for 40 days and he talks about the kingdom of God for 40 days. After they listen to this message, what is their concern? Let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. This is what they concern the most. They say, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know times or season that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Now we still think and worry about my kingdom and mine. It's not just me anymore, you anymore, it's, it's beyond you. How about my possession, my castle that I built? How about my work that I put on my career in it, my career? This is all we worry about. Now Jesus talks about kingdom of God consistently for 40 days. And after 40 days of the message you're hearing about that, now you come and ask Jesus this, how about my land? How about my house? How about my family? How about my work? Think how Jesus would react to you. He'll be like, oh my God. You still think about yourself. You still caught up in yourself. That's how Satan's deceiving. And deceiving you say, what if it's not going to be restored? What if God's not, God's not going to do anything to me? What if he's not going to heal me? So we calculate. Not only that, John chapter 15, uh, 21, 15 to 20, now Jesus came to Peter who ran away from Jesus because he saw Jesus dying, Jesus crucified, and Jesus came before Peter again and asked him, do you love me? And isn't it so grateful? I'm sure Peter would answer him that you know within the tears of his eyes. He loved Jesus so much. He desired Jesus a lot. But he couldn't overcome the fear. So he ran away. But doesn't mean that he doesn't like Jesus. He still loved Jesus. So Jesus knew the depth of Peter's confession of faith. So Jesus came to Peter and he's asking Peter, do you love me? And Peter must answer to that within the crying, within the tears in his eyes. You know, Lord. I know people are all judging me that I ran away. But you know that I still love you. So he said, feed my lamb. Right? Look at John chapter 21, 21, 23. When Jesus told Peter, feed my lamb, Peter saying, when Peter saw him, so verse 21 to 23 talk about this guy who asked Jesus, who is the guy who will kill you, right? Who is the guy who will betray you? So Jesus looked at him saying, Lord, what about this man? Is he going to follow you? Is he still going to remain with you? Now that we are doing like that, God is telling you to make disciples of all nations, kingdom of God, and now that we are at the church, how about that guy doesn't follow you? How about this guy doesn't follow your word? How about this person? He's not doing anything for you. And that's what Peter concerned. And what did Jesus say? If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Why does that bother you? Why is that a problem to you? Don't worry about it. And he says, follow me, right? Just follow my word. And in the church, we make this kind of excuse so many times. What about this guy? He doesn't give a tithe. What about this guy? He doesn't do Bible study with anyone. What about this guy? He's making all kinds of excuses. We are bothered by how people are worshiping God. And what is that to you guys? If God remain him that way until he comes back. And he says, follow me. 
Don't excuse yourself. Don't be bothered. Follow me. How about my mom? My dad doesn't do prayer journal. They don't even listen to the message. Sunday I saw my parents listen, doesn't even listen to the perfect message. When I see my teachers, they don't even call me. They don't concern about me. When I see all these church members, they're so hypocrites. That might be the confession of you. And what does God answer to you? What is that to you? If I will remain them like that forever till I come. What is that to you if I do that? If that's my will, why are you so bothered? My old self is really caught up in myself. I am caught up in myself. How about my study? How about my people? How about my school? This is a trap. And we concern about mine. You know, many times we simply say, I can stake my life for Jesus. It's really easy to stake your life. If you're, you're at a position where you're about to be dead, I'm sure you guys will stake your life for Jesus. I believe in you guys. And I would do that too, right? How about we bring that to our reality? If you believe in Jesus, you got to pay $1,000 every week. You will be fine, thousand dollars. Would you come to church? If you believe in Jesus, if you follow Jesus, you gotta you gotta reduce your time of sleep. You can't sleep more than two hours. Would you still follow Jesus? You know, we always say, I will stake my life for you. But it's really we can't even stake a little thing of my life to Jesus. So guys, bring the word to your reality. If you really want to stake your life, Get rid of your self, self, self selfishness that's centered around you. This is a trap, and we all worry about mine. This has been the snare of your life. What you believe yours will catch you and will kill you, and that destroys you. Not only that, it's me, mine. So what are we so, what, what frame have we built in our lives? We are using my method, my career, my experience, my strengths, my knowledge, my power for me. This has been your frame. When we are caught up in trap and snare and frame, Buddha is telling you, discard yourself. New Age is telling you, empty yourself, which is impossible. You lost your autonomy over your life. You can't do anything about your life. You can't even discard. You can't even empty yourself. You have nothing on your life because this is Satan's trap. This is Satan's snare. This is Satan's frame that we are confined in his deception and in his work for so long. It's my old self has been the old self of Satan that belonged to Satan. What did Jesus tell us when he's resurrected? What is this resurrected message, resurrection message? When you only concern about you, yours, and your method, he says, go and make disciples of all nations. He knows that's your old frame, but he's not bothered. He knows that's your old self, but he's not bothered. He's still telling you and speaking to you and preaching to you, go make disciples of all nations. Look at Mark 16, 16 to 20. Go into the whole world and preach the gospel. I know your old self, but go into the whole world. Overcome yourself. Because I am the resurrected Lord. This is what we talk about today. Christ has never been bound in myself. Never been bound in my boundary. We are bound in His love and His power. Acts chapter 1.8 
What does it say? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be the witness to Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea, and to the ends of the earth. What does He's not bothered by who you are because He has transformed you already. You know, many times we still think about this way. We think this way. We tend to think this way. I've done everything for the Lord. I, I come to church for so long. My family is serving the church for so long. We give such amount of money to the church. And we gave such offering to church. And we literally donate our money to church. And But you never know. God never needs your donation, right? And we're like, I've been praying to God for so long. But how come we never change? It's because our direction is not directing towards His which is to the whole world, to all nations. How about my family? Don't be bothered by your family. You know what Jesus says? Abandon your family, abandon your even father and your mother, and follow me. He will add everything that you need. How about my family, my school, my education? That's not your business anymore because you belong to me now. What you need to take care of will be mine to take care of. So Jesus will take care of everything of you, and you may take care of his business. Make disciples of all nations, be the witnesses to the ends of the earth, go into the whole world. Lord, I need money. No, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I need to be educated. No, I will be with you. Our identity is being changed and we are given this authority. When he says, be the witness to the end of the hearse, or when he says, make disciples of all nations, this is what he also promised. All the authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And he promised, I'll be with you to the ends of the earth. When he says, go into the whole world and preach the gospel, he not only says that you will see the signs, that in my name you will cast out demons, you will speak the new tongues, you may pick up serpents, and you may drink the poison drinks, but it will not hurt you. Now that everything's promised and he's telling us to go into the world, how about if I get to touch the serpent, if I get to drink poison drink, it's not going to hurt you. Do you guys believe in the word of God? When you're saying, I am still weak, you know this is another way of being arrogant. When God says you need to go, you're like, oh, I'm not enough to go yet. I'm not knowledgeable enough. I don't have enough strength. I am stupid. I am. That's another way for you to be arrogant. When Jesus says to you, Jesus said to you to go, you're saying, no, I can. What do you mean you can? He said, yes, you can. You're saying, no, I can. So many times we're not even fighting against Satan. We fight, we deal with God these days. We try to make a deal with God. We got to know the enemy that we're fighting against. And he says, yes, you can. That means, yes, you can. When you receive power, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be the witness to the end of the earth. Restore fundamental faith without any excuse, without any calculation. <clears throat> when the Roman centurion came before Jesus without his servant who's sick, he's lying in the bed, paralyzed. And the serpent, servant, I mean servant is in a condition he cannot move. And that also the Roman centurion believed this guy doesn't even need to be present before Jesus. So what he did is get rid of all his calculation excuse. 
He just came before the word of God. Lord Jesus, just say it. It will be done. Just say it. And Jesus says, let it be done for you as you believe. He told you and he spoke to you guys. Make disciples of all nations. Go into the whole world. It will be the witness to the end of the earth. And you may believe in this. What does Galatians chapter 2.20 says? I have been crucified with Christ. Your old self has been crucified. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in this, faith in this fundamental gospel. Faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So now I live by the faith in the Son of God. Now we live by the faith in this fundamental gospel. So restore your fundamental faith in Christ alone and open your eyes and look at the beyond your reality. What the Word says about your reality. The Word says your reality is make disciples of all nations, go into the whole world and be the witness to the ends of the earth. That is my reality. Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 2. Galatians talk about how we've been crucified. Now, Galatians talks about if then you have been raised with Christ. Not only that you are crucified, but you are raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. If you are raised with Christ. This is our way. We not only crucified with Christ, we are raised with Christ. And that we, we shouldn't take this word of God just as the grace of God, but we should take the message as our mission of our lives. You guys will take this message into your reality. And when you go into the reality, we tend to compromise this word of God within my thoughts within the words of the parents, within the words of others, within the knowledge of the world. But you may not trade the word within the worldly things, but take it as a mission into your field. You may not compromise your word within your thoughts. Break all the force of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. He gave us that authority and identity. Awake your souls. Awake your Jesus. Let him speak to you every single day. So one of our remnants gave us a prayer, uh, evangelism track, uh, evangelism subjects. So, you know, last week we shared how we have three people to evangelize. One of our remnants gave us his dad as a subject to share the gospel. In the beginning, he asked me, what if he's not going to accept? That was his question. What if his, his, he will... What if he ignores me? You know what happens is last week, God set it up all the things for his son, his, his father to open his heart. He made everything so difficult so his dad has nothing to speak against his son. So this son shared the gospel with his dad. All his what if worried crushed at once. He asked his dad to accept Jesus Christ and his dad confessed, why not? He thought it would be really difficult, but his dad was so ready. So the time schedule of a person, whether this person will accept Christ or not, is not on that person, but it's on you today. Would you take that God's mission to your reality and speak Jesus Christ? Acts chapter 2 verse 36 you know what Peter confessed to the house of Israel? This Jesus you crucified, God has raised him as a Lord and as a Christ. That was the message of Peter. God made this Jesus you crucified on the cross as a Lord and a Christ. Acts chapter 17, verse 3. The one who died and who raised it's Jesus who is the Christ. 
This is our message that we will share with anyone in the world. Whoever goes to church should listen to this message. Whoever does not attend church should listen to this message too. So I pray we may restore our fundamental faith and take it as our mission. It's not just grace. Oh, we will receive the fundamental faith, but it should be the mission of our lives. Or in the reality, you'll be confused again. You'll be in chaos. Because they are all in confusion. They're all in chaos. So what they can do to you is make you chaotic and confuse you. Make you empty. Make you fall in deeper darkness. That's all they can do because they are already filled with the darkness. So it is our mission to restore this and take this evangelism camp happening in our, in our lives. Let it be my prayer topic. Let it be my vision. Let it be my dream. Let it be my image. Let it be my practice. Let the Word of God be my practice in our lives. So let it be done for you as you have believed in my word. Amen. So please resurrect your Jesus. Restore your faith in the Word of God. And having carried His business into your reality. Let's have a time of praise, Calvary. As we confess, as we sing a song, may you meditate on the word too. May you meditate on the word we just received. May you think about the three people that you should share the gospel. And when you think about the subject that you want to share the gospel, get rid of your uh, calculation. Oh, I think this person is not ready to listen. This girl is not ready. Get rid of your calculation. Just have three on your list and take that as your mission to uh, take that as your mission and let's just share it. Pray that God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Christ, break all the force of darkness that hinder my friends, that hinder my friends family to listen to your word and break all my old self put it up the new self of you and fill us with the Holy Spirit and let it be the prayer topic as we sing a song